Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a braille cell at home so that you can practice and teach your child how to do braille at home. The first thing I'm going to be showing you is doing a braille cell with a regular cupcake tin. So typically cupcake tins come in a 12 count. This one I am showing you below is a 12 count. If you have a 6 count, even better. But the most common one is a 12 count. So what I did is I just put tape over the two sides of the cupcake tin so that when you are doing it, your child can feel the sides and feel that, okay, there's nothing here. And then the remainder are the six in the middle. And this is what a typical brow cell looks like. You have the three on one side and three on the other. So if you don't have a cupcake tin at home, I do have another option for you. And the other option is to use a regular egg carton. Now there's different types of egg cartons you can get. If you have a 12 count one, even better, this one I have is an 18 count. So this is what you can do to create a braille cell out of a regular egg carton. So you can cut the lid off. You can choose to leave it on or not. I find it's easier to cut this lid off. And now what you have here is almost a bunch of little braille cells because braille cells are again two rows of three. So ideally what you're looking for is anything that you have at home that's two rows of three. So here I have essentially one, two, three braille cells that I can use. So you can cut here. And to cut through these to create your braille cell. Okay. Now you can either choose to leave the centerpiece in and then you can use that as a divider so that they understand one, two, three, one, two, three. Or you can clip this metal part off, just depending on how high your metal one is. And then you can put tape over this middle portion so that it all feels the same. That way you're not getting the kids confused with this middle part here. So you can use some tape and just cover up this middle portion and do like this. All right, so now we have our two different types of braille cells. So what do we do with them? So here's different things you can do at home. Now, if you have access to six small balls, that's the best. That's the best because that's typically what a Braille bump is, is a half circle. So you can choose to either do balls. But what I find that my kids love the most is if you guys have little Paw Patrol figurines, little cars, little trains, whatever your child loves to play with, use those to your advantage especially Paw Patrol, you can name which ones are in which sales and the kids love it. So these balls fit in my cupcake tray, but they also fit over here in my smaller ones. So you can see the difference between the trays and what your child will work best with. If your kid needs something bigger, like maybe tennis balls and um, bigger plastic balls, you may need to use the cupcake tray, especially if they're working on dexterity of reaching and grabbing. They need something bigger to grab with. If they're working on something smaller. This might be better to use little ping pong balls, any little balls or toys you find at home. And then you can just use a regular egg curtain. And this is what I do with my kids. I just tell them. All right, so for A, we do cell one. 
For B, we do cell 1, 2. For C, we do 1, 4. So that's how they would practice their alphabet using a tray, like an egg tray or a muffin tin. All right, so some kiddos who are learning Braille are still visual learners. So to learn the Braille cell, we can do what we do in my classroom. I take a sheet of paper and I use these sheet protectors and I'll put the paper into the sheet protector like this and they can learn how to do their braille in here. So the first thing you can teach them to do is drawing the circles so that they learn the cell layout. So one, two, three. And then I tell them, okay, we got one, two, three. And then we go to our second column, four, five, six. Gives them that practice of or, or, uh, OT skills, occupational therapy skills to draw the circles and use their grasp to draw circles and understand the concept of a circle. But it also practices how the braille cell is laid out. Once they get that down pat, you can also work on this where I have pre-done circles and have it in a sheet and then I have them use just a regular dry erase marker and go through and label one, two, three, four, five, six. And when you use a dry erase marker on these sheet protectors, you just have to grab a tissue and they come right off so that you can practice again. Now, what you can also do with your child is do fill in the circle for a letter. So you could say A and they could practice filling in A. And if you say B, they can practice filling in B. And then they can erase and do a or one and four for C. So you can practice with them on filling in and the kids love that practices OT skills, working on that dexterity, building up their hand muscles. And it's also something fun to do. Now, if you don't have this sheet protector or also for some kids, working with an angle is a lot better for them. So I have this angled, it's just a regular file folder binder. And what I do is I fold the paper just a little bit so I'm able to put it in here at, a, at an angle. And these are also dry erase friendly. So you can put the paper, same paper at an angle and do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then Erase it just as if it was a sheet protector. Erases two. So this is another great way of practicing with your kids at home without having to go through a bunch of paper. You're able to use these and the kids can erase and do it all on their own. Now, if your kids are starting to learn, if your kids are starting to learn the braille cell numbers, another thing you can do you have stickers I have been doing this with my kiddos and putting a one two three four five six And then I take these, they're removable stickers, and you can put them on here. What's great is that these are removable if you have them, and then I can just peel them on or put them on when I need to for my students to give them a little extra help when we are working on those braille letters. And then I tuck it in here. Now, if we're doing 
A, I would tell them, what's A? And they would say, A is 1. So I would say, okay, color in the 1. And what is C? It's 1, 4. And now they're already lined up and ready for them to do the number. They don't have to worry about figuring out where the numbers go. They can just focus on the numbers and the letters. You can also do, these are removable. And I sometimes do it with my students matching. So you can do pre-set up circles or just the stickers. And if they're not working on drawing, they can just put the stickers on one, two, three, four, five, six. There's so much you can do with this as much as you want to get creative with it. But here's a basic foundation to get you set up and going so you guys can start practicing and working on the Braille code at home. Thank you so much all for looking at my video and I hope to I hope you all are practicing and learning at home. Have a great day.